So here we are with two of our offshore models. This is a 17 Sport Offshore. It has a six and a half foot wide bottom, 16 de degrees of dead rise in the planing surface, up to 30 degrees of dead rise in the bow. The big brother to the Sport Offshore is a Super Sport Offshore. This is the 20 footer. has a seven foot wide bottom, has 18 degrees of dead rise in the planing surface, up to 40 degrees of dead rise in the bow. Both have the nice pointed bow, forward walk around high sides. Let's go down, look at some more features, and put them in the water. All right, now we're looking at the 17 Sport in the water here, not too long before we take it out. As you can see, for a 17 foot boat, it's huge. It uh, can be mistaken easily for a much bigger boat. But it's because it's got the six and a half foot wide bottom, eight foot beam, a lot of big parts for a little boat. And that was the whole point of this, was to get a lot of fishing room out of a smaller package. We do have that deep V that I mentioned earlier for a, for a 17 footer, the 16 degrees in the planing, the 30 degrees in the bow, large motor bracket here, which is optional on the 17. Mount a kicker to either side, goes full width. Mount a cooler on one side, a small cooler. Has our displacement box underneath, which adds, uh, displaces the weight of these engines with trolling, mooching, but also it's out of the way when we get up on step. We can have that motor is mounted a little bit higher and gives us uh, two inches more clearance than if the bottom was all the way out to the motor or if the motor was mounted right on the transom. That bracket is, is, is an awesome option. Besides getting the motor away, you got that extra clearance. You're gonna to run top speed, gain a few miles an hour, and uh, clearance, the two inches of clearance as far as hitting anything. Standard railings, standard downrigger brackets and cleats. Large fish box comes with the with the bracket in the rear. Place to put your fish, bait, whatever you want. Got a cutting board here. Optional interior paint. There's two underfloor storage hatches here. On this boat, we did an option also by moving the dual batteries forward. This one has the optional additional seats here in the back. Got some swivels, plenty of room. Let's take a look up front. Another thing Woldridge is known for in our windshield boats is our windshield itself. Large two-piece instead of three. That gives us many things. One is in, in crummy weather or whenever, you have better visibility with two large pieces of glass than you have with three smaller ones. The visibility is great. When I'm sitting down driving, I'm not a small guy. I'm almost six foot three tall, but I got great leg room here, sitting there. I got good visibility. I'm not looking through the top of the windshield. I can see very clearly what's going on out there. Many, many windshields make it hard to see or there's obstructions in your view. This is great visibility. And also, there's times where I may want to stand up and drive if I'm coming to a dock or I see some obstacles. I go to stand up, I'm well above the windshield. I don't feel like I'm bouncing my chin off of this thing. Also, my hand is right on the wheel, right on the power without having to crouch down. Let's take a look at our door. This is a huge Woldridge deal with the two-piece windshield. Now when you're not parked on a trailer at the dock, you're usually out in the water and you're probably going to go pull up to some beach somewhere. Maybe you're going to fish at some remote beach or go have lunch somewhere. But getting in and out of the bow is a big deal then. Well again, unlike the three-piece, ours has a large two-piece. I can walk through here with the cooler. It's nice and easy. Easy to get in and out with my gear or someone who's not as mobile as I am. It's not as hard to get through here. Also, the forward walk around, it's nice and gracious if I needed to use it. There's also rope and chain storage up in the bow. You can see up there. Here's our couple storage hatches under the floor here. Put lots of stuff. Well, that's the 17 Sport Offshore. Let's go take a look at the 20 Super Sport 
But a lot more things are standard on this boat. The bracket, it's standard. Fish box, this is standard. Again, the railings and downriggers and cleats, downrigger brackets, those were standard on the other boat, but these are standard on this boat as well. As you can see, lots of space. That seven foot wide bottom, eight and a half beam, we got a lot of space here. Very stable, very buoyant, hauls weight well, is very efficient, gets up on step easy with a load with minimal power because of this width. And you can see it here. There's a few options on this boat uh, beyond what we were looking at on the other sport that are standard as well. The curtain is standard. This uh, covers up all your batteries, your switches, your gas wire separator, bilge. That curtain is standard on this boat. We'll take a look up front and some other standard features as well. This one has the optional canvas. Very nice canvas. It's all sunbrella. You can see we have the optional cruise curtain here with the roll-up door in the center. You can roll this down, get inside out of the weather if you need to. This one has the optional 36 inch long storage boxes with bench seats, suspension seats, air ride, fully adjustable suspension seats up front, and more locking storage up under the bow, which we can look at, which is standard on this boat. Well, again, here we are, the large Aldridge two-piece windshield. You can see what kind of room we got up here as far as a walkthrough. Large two pieces of glass, again, great visibility. When I'm up on the beach and we're getting in, it's going to be easy to get down to the boat with some gear. I'm sitting on the bow cap, which has our rope and chain storage again. Nice and easy there. Now, the other standard feature I wanted to point out is this wall, and there's a locking door here. That's standard on this boat, it's an option on others. These seats, these are the options on this boat. Optional interior paint, of course, electronics, however you want. Again, storage under the floor. Canvas, you can see here, is, is very versatile. When the door is open, we can zip back just above the door to get in and out. Or if that was zipped down and enclosed, I could do the same thing about the driver. If I needed to stand up and drive, I keep everybody else closed in. So very nice features, all high quality items on this boat. Another thing, when you do jump up to the 20 footer, you get those storage trays in the side where there's flotation in the smaller boats. This one has the storage trays with the rod holders. All the boats have rod holders. This one's just got the trays. So I think you got a pretty good idea of what's going on in the 17 Sport, 20 Sport, Super Sport Offshore. Let's uh, go test the efficiency and go run them and see what they do, okay? So here we are out in the 17 Sport Offshore. We've got our fuel consumption equipment hooked up to the 90 horse four stroke Yamaha. We're gonna go see what it does. Gallons per hour, miles per hour, what it burns. Got our GPS to give us accurate speed. We're gonna go off our tack and our fuel flow meter. Ready, Captain? Let's do it. 3,000. 3, 2.8. to get an accurate read.
there's my pops, Glenn Woldridge, going to be piloting the Super Sport offshore for another test. He's got the TAC and GPS. I'm over here with the fuel flow meter, checking out the gallons per hour and all that jazz. We got the wires hooked up to the 150 horse Yamaha four stroke. And again, we'll be monitoring every 500 RPM increments to get the fuel flow of this engine at whatever RPMs. We're going to go both directions on the lake from trolling all the way to flat out. Get most accurate read as possible. Uh, make sure to stay tuned at the end of all this footage to see the results for both the fuel test of the 17 offshore and this boat, the 20 foot Super Sport offshore. We're going to do the same thing again, go in the other direction. We're going 500 RPM increments. Well, here's a look at the rear end of our 17 Sport Offshore. As you can see, that full width bracket and the displacement box underneath, which help displaces the weight of the engines when trolling or mooching. Flat box pushed underneath the water really adds for stability. But the other thing about this boat, 17 foot, it has a six and a half foot wide bottom. That makes it very stable, but we still have very respectable V in such a small boat. 16 degrees here at the transom, up to 30 at the bow. So now we're getting a good look at the transom of the 20 foot Super Sport Offshore. You can see the bracket runs full length across the transom. You can mount a kicker on either side or a, a ladder on either side. You got the displacement box underneath there which displaces the weight of the engine when trolling, mooching, trailing waves, any of that. And you can see that deep V, 18 degrees dead rise, all the way down through the planing surface with the 40 degrees up at the bow. This is a good view. Check it out. Cool. All right, well here we are, we're out in the shop. We're looking at a 20 foot Super Sport Offshore. This one, the fabrication is complete. It's still got a little ways to go as far as outfitting. But the point here is so you can see under the floor, you can see the structure. This is something you don't see at most showrooms. This is, uh, we're not ashamed to show you any bit of it. We're very proud of it, as a matter of fact. All our boats have the lifetime haul warranty. Here's a chance for you to see why we really don't have warranty problems. Many boat manufacturers believe that just the thickness of the skin can hold the primary uh, strength of the boat. And uh, what, a, what a lot of these guys have is they'll have ultra thick skin, whether it's quarter inch or thicker, which is good. And then they'll have a box girder construction. What box girder construction is, is two uprights running full length of one side of the hull that are welded solid full length. And that's what they're counting on for their strength. The thicker bottom, the box girder construction. Well, in our opinion, we believe that you can get a stronger boat that's lighter by, by doing it this way. Now, I may use a little bit lighter skin. Um, th on this particular boat, it's 3 16ths of an inch on the bottom, or 190 thousandths of an inch. 
an eighth inch on the sides or 125 thousandths of an inch, okay? But my structure, I'm using 190 thousandths of an inch and 250 thousandths of an inch, which is quarter inch structure. So I can get away with using thinner skin. Skin is very important, very important, but just as important, we believe, is the structure, which you can see is spread all over this boat. Now, a box girder, it would just be these two points like this, similar to this running full length, two points of contact on one side of the bottom. Well, I've already matched that with these right here. But I've got a third here running full length, and in between all these, I've got quarter inch thick channels that have two legs on them. That gives us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine points of contact on one side of the bottom versus just two on a box girder. So that's why I can use a little bit lighter skin by using lots of structure. Therefore, I get a boat that's lighter weight, but in our opinion, more strong. Um, we have the lifetime hull warranty that, that backs that up. So this way, with a boat like this, uh, you don't have to worry about uh, hauling heavy loads or, or abusing the boat because the boat's strong. But also, you got lighter boats, so whether behind your truck or out in the water, you're going to be more efficient running, you're going to be more efficient towing it, you're going to be more efficient hauling a weight, hauling load, getting up on step easier because you're not hauling unnecessary weight in the haul that really isn't doing anything to help your strength. So we want you to see this, we want you to look at this, compare this when you're out looking at other boats. This is an area that you don't see and it's an area that a lot of salesmen don't have a knowledge to tell you truthfully what's actually under the floor. Hope you enjoyed it.